The Pharaoh's back with some pretty evil ideas about taking over the world. Yes, it looks like trouble. Crime Scope has picked up on a report that the Pharaoh is back in this area. After you, my capricious Cleopatra. Redirect those. Save Stay tuned. Turns with some pretty scary tricks which our super pair don't like. Looks like trouble. Crime Scope has picked up on a report that the Pharaoh is back in this area. King Tut's pyramid and the Coptic eye. Both within my grasp. Uh, Frank, we're running out of room. Stay tuned. Welcome back, citizens, to an all-new episode of the Batcave Podcast. It's your old bat chum, John S. Drew here, and this is it. It 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 took several years to get through this, through no fault at all of my partner in crime in this. And let me bring him in right away. Please welcome back to the podcast from the Flopcast, Kevin Eldridge. Hey, Kevin. John, I love that we have just made this our life's work. The, <laughs> the way we have made stretch these eight episodes <laughs> over a period of years i think it's even more impressive the way we, we drew this thing out well with the question now is what are we going to do then with the rest of our lives it's all downhill from here all downhill <laughs> from here. i suppose what we could do is we could just considering the rest of our lives we could review days of our lives Oh, that that will certainly fill our time up <laughs> <laughs> quite nicely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just follow yeah. the rest of Deirdre Hall's career over the next several decades. There you go, Days of Our <laughs> Lives in Our House. Yeah, yeah. I'll do Our House. I'm not watching Days of Our Lives. <laughs> I'll join you for the Our House podcast, though. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Some Wilfred oh. Brimley talk. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I... <laughs> You know, I, I just heard a podcast the other day about Wilfred Brimley. Uh, uh, oh. What's it called? Um, uh, Bizarre Albums. And they were covering Wilfred oh, yeah. Brimley's album. The man was 52 when he did Cocoon. Oh, even a little younger than that, I think. He was he, he was 49. Oh. I believe he was 49 yes. when they started. He, he yes. turned yes. 50 during the production of that show yeah yes, or of that movie right. yeah I, I listened to that bizarre albums episode as well coincidentally and also by coincidence i just uh, we're recording this uh, just after halloween and uh, i i just a couple of days ago i watched uh, the thing the john carpenter's the thing which wilford brimley is in uh without the mustache it's so mm -hmm. weird seeing a mustache free wilford brimley yeah <laughs> <laughs> But once you once you hear that voice, it's unmistakably right. <laughs> oh, that's Brimley. Yes, <laughs> this is how we're going to stretch out these Electra Woman shows by making them mostly about things completely unrelated to Electra Woman. Well, like, this, is, this is now the it's the Brimley cast. We can keep this going forever. Oh, somebody needs to do that. The Brimley cast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and at the end of every episode, they just say, "Make sure you check for your diabetes." <laughs> <laughs> oh nice. man. He's a, he has a pretty good singing voice too i thought in that bizarre albums episode i was like he's not a bad singer he did not embarrass himself on the, yeah. his the, the wilford brimley album yes as some celebrities do but no he yes. uh, he, he pulled it off if, if you're looking for uh wilford brimley <laughs> singing some uh kind of light jazz or pop kind of standard sort of songs enjoy have at it my there friends you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's get into this here as we said this is it the final episode out of eight episodes how many years we're here with the return of the pharaoh two so episodes later <laughs> the pharaoh comes back <laughs> i know no two episodes later 
Uh, yeah, I mean, we did we did Return of the Sorcerer already, and yes. I was thinking about this, and, and it's it feels like kind of a shame that for a show that lasted eight episodes, we only got six villains, since mm. uh, two villains we got reruns of. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed the return appearances, but it's such a limited series to begin with that I feel like would we have been better off as viewers getting two more whole new villains? Mm-hmm. I think that that it's possible that they were thinking this was going to be longer lived. So, of course, you just start kind of like Batman. I mean, if you think about it, uh, what was it? Uh, the Riddler. He appears in the first episode and then we see him. I think it's the sixth episode. He makes a return mm -hmm. to Batman. And then, of course, each of them make return. I mean, granted, we got a, quite a run of different villains over the course of the three years. This was sadly. Only sure. Episodes. Yeah, and I, I don't know if this was a budget thing. Was this a cost savings measure to some extent to not have to do different costumes? Uh, I, I don't I don't know how much of a how much of a savings it is to to uh, have a couple of villains return. I, I don't imagine it would make a huge difference in the cost of the show. You know, other than couple of costumes that's all i can think of that <laughs> that would make a difference in, in cost well it makes you it makes you wonder if this show had gone on and they brought the pharaoh back again because the first time it was the pharaoh now it's the return of the pharaoh what would you do for a title then after that <laughs> episode three would be uh we're all just kind of sick of the pharaoh at this point yes. <laughs> <laughs> but not this time it was it was fun to see the fact he was a fun villain the first time around and uh two weeks later <laughs> he was or, or four weeks later i guess if they, if they split him up into two parters on the croft right. super show uh the pharaoh returns and uh with cleopatra as well so why not welcome back right return of the pharaoh writer sam strangus director jack Regis. december 18th and 25th 1976 so christmas day you know, yes, and you gotta wonder <laughs> how many kids actually sat and watched uh, the Croft Super Show on Christmas morning when you're like opening up all your <laughs> presents. <laughs> yeah, I, I looked this up because I was surprised to see that as well that this was Christmas Day, and mm -hmm. I went back and saw, yeah, Christmas did fall on a Saturday that year, and <laughs> they, apparently they just showed whatever their regular Saturday morning schedule was. There was nothing special on TV for Christmas. No, no. No, I seem to recall uh, the the like ABC and such doing things for Thanksgiving. Like for years, uh, Man Called yeah. Flintstone, the movie would air here in yeah. New York on ABC. I don't remember watching, you know, Saturday morning cartoons on a Christmas morning, just if it happened to be a Saturday. But so I, I probably missed this one the first time around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had um, other things on my mind Christmas morning. Uh, so let's let's get into this here and talk about because it is the pharaoh the coptic eye the sacred mystic symbol of the ancient egyptians but the great pharaohs for whom it was so important are all gone with one regrettable exception the coptic eye oh if i could only get my hands on it with his extraordinary powers, I could rule the world. What's stopping you? Fate and 6,000 miles. The Coptic Eye, the original, is buried deep inside the main chamber of King Tut's pyramid in Egypt. Ah, oh, well, you know what they say. If they can't bring the pharaoh to the pyramid, then bring the pyramid to the pharaoh. And what do you mean by that cunning statement? Simply the King Tut's Pyramid and your precious Coptic eye are closer than you think. This was right out of the gate. How how, how crazy can you get? Yes. To, <laughs> to, uh, to, to when they're interviewing the the guy, the businessman, I guess, that was turning uh, the, 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 the pyramid, the King Tut's tomb, into a tourist attraction and, and says he spent billions to move it stone by stone from Egypt mm -hmm. to America. Yeah. Yeah. Now he <laughs> says he says stone by stone, which suggests that it was broken down and put back yeah. together. <laughs> and yet yes. they managed to not only put it back together, they put it all back together, leaving all the traps in place. 
<laughs> That's I didn't think it think of that, but yes, they were completely faithful to whatever crazy death traps the ancient Egyptians put in place. They carefully restored. <laughs> Very impressive. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, it's it's hard to even fathom how, how crazy this is. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, we, we've got the um, so that the Pharaoh is regretting how he can't get his hands on the Coptic eye. That's the, the treasure that, that he seeks. And the reason he cites is because he says it's 6000 miles away. This is before he learns that, oh, no, they've moved <laughs> the whole thing <laughs> from Egypt right over to your neighborhood. But it, it seemed so silly in like in the world of superheroes and supervillains that that's what was stopping him from getting the Coptic eye was it was all the way over in Egypt. <laughs> like usually you picture a supervillain, they're just going to hop in their supervillain jet or whatever, or, or transport beam or they're, you know, a, a villain, supervillains, you think they could get themselves to, <laughs> to Egypt if they needed to. Yes. So it seems fine. This is a very, a very locally based supervillain. And he, <laughs> he only seeks uh, Egyptian treasures if they're in his immediate neighborhood. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's funny you mentioned you know hopping in your plane and heading to egypt and i'm thinking of the batman 66 episode with king tut where batman is doing like a a, a thing on the news with gordon and he says i must i must go to alexandria to consult the source and gordon goes alexandria that quaint suburb in washington and he's like commissioner <laughs> i'm going to egypt <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's man. no need to go to Egypt anymore. We will just bring all the rare Egyptian treasures right over here. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, and and I love this because Crime Scope even detects the Pharaoh's presence, and so because of mm -hmm. it, Frank has to call Lori and Judy back to Electra Base. Yeah, they were interviewing the guy, the, the, the guy who also announced that oh, the tourists stopped coming. So after the billions of dollars and stone by stone and moving the whole thing, then he just announced, well, I guess we're just going to seal it up now. Right. <laughs> they, yeah. they, he just immediately went out of business. But yeah, that that little interview though was being witnessed by. Uh, the Pharaoh and Cleopatra who were just crouched down behind some bushes <laughs> nearby. Now, can I ask you, did you get the feeling that Cleo a lot more aggressive in this story than in the previous one? She's more of a partner Cleo in this. Yeah. It, it's her even, plan. She, like, she kind of, right. She, she takes the lead. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking that like, she's more of the boss in this one almost. Oh, yeah. In fact, when she says this time I have a plan and when she says that she actually looks right at the camera. <laughs> Cleopatra stares out at us, which I don't remember that happening in any other episodes. So that was kind of a surprise for it. A, a character actually kind of breaks the fourth wall and looks yeah. out at the viewer. But yeah, she's got she's got the whole plan of how she's going to. Well, basically, you know, we go back to Electra Base, and before the you know the plan goes into action, we've got to have Frank with his new gadget of the week. I felt you'd be interested in the latest in night tracking devices. Well, what is it, Frank? Well, I choose to call it Electrovision. Go on, now put it into your electrocomps, plug it in. Now watch your eyes, punch up your bypass. <laughs> Oh, Electra Blinding! Wow, that's a flashlight, Frank. <laughs> All right, now turn it off, turn it off. Ah. <laughs> Electra Vision can turn night into day, as you can see, huh? I couldn't see anything. <laughs> Greetings, Electra Woman and Dinah Girl. As a law-abiding citizen, I feel it is my duty to warn you. She's warning us? The Pharaoh has his eye on something in King Tut's pyramid and intends to make it his own. But why is she telling us all this? You're probably wondering why I'm telling you all this. Well, I've seen the light, as you say. I'm through with my life of crime. Trust me. Trust her? Huh. I'd sooner trust a cobra. King Tut's pyramid. <laughs> Wait, this could be a trap, Electra Woman. But it's a place to start, Frank. Come on, Nina Girl, we're off to the pyramid. Just a blinding light. Oh, it didn't look too shockingly blinding on TV, but no. 
the people experiencing it seem to be uh, quite blinded by it, though. Electrovision. Right. Yes. You would think it would be called Electra Day. Or like, to me, when they said Electrovision, I thought it was going to be something to sit in the dark, not illuminate the dark. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite of vision. It's blinding you. <laughs> <laughs> Frank was completely out of ideas for what to call anything at this point. It's the end of the series. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and once again, another trope for the series, our villains contact Electra base to let them know that they're going to steal uh, <laughs> from the pyramid. But I got to admit this time around, it's because, you know, it's not like a challenge. Or anything. It's to set the trap. Right, yeah. right. It actually right. makes sense this time. Usually they right. just call in just to gloat and be, be obnoxious. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so you know, Electro Woman head up to the pyramid. They get there. They do a sensor scan of the area. And love Judy Strangus there. Uh, Judy Strangus. Judy there punching away the buttons on the electric comp. She, she reminds me of like Burt Ward there with like such... Like there's such vigor yeah. to it. She's like just stabbing the buttons on her electric. <laughs> but it worked. That sensor scan. I love those footprints that suddenly appear. Those big, goofy, black, cartoony footprints. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, the, I don't think any any actual normal shoes in the world make a footprint that looks as much like a footprint as that. You know, those those were goofy looking footprints. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, it's like the opening credits of My Three Sons. Those kinds of shoes would make footprints like they found. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, they, they with that, they're able to, like, sort of run into the Pharaoh, which then he leads them on a chase and traps them with the old falling ceiling. <laughs> this was a... Uh, I had mixed feelings about this this effect, this trap, in that... The, the actual the the giant block lowering over them looked looked good you know that mm -hmm. it was it was a giant thing getting lower and lower effective in that oh yeah they have to keep getting down on their knees they're almost laying down as the thing's getting lower and lower mm -hmm. and that all looked good except for the idea that it also looked like they could step forward about six feet and be out in front of it because <laughs> what, what is in front of this room because you know there's no <laughs> There's, there appeared to be just a big wide open area where the camera is pointed at this for for us to see, you know you know what i mean it looked very silly that there's nothing in front of them mm -hmm. there appeared yep. to be an open missing wall and they could have just walked straight out towards us yeah i i i did like though because basically you know frank techno babbles his uh, his way out of it by increasing their power yes now if i were to eliminate certain crime scope functions and redirect those same energy sources to your electro beams and would you be terribly offended if we asked you to stop talking and just do it hmm? oh yeah yes yes right 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 huh. here, here it comes Yes, not, not, not bad, not bad at all, Grimescope. <laughs> and I love the little like way that Frank is just so pleased with himself that he did it. Yeah, he really took his time about it, though. I mean, he was kind of very slowly considering, and then finally I can divert some power from Crimescope and flips a few switches, and meanwhile... And I also wondered, like, how scary this might have been, depending on, like, younger, this, if there were very young kids watching this. It really looked like Electro Woman and Dino Girl were about to just be squished. Yes. It really was. The giant thing really was getting lower and lower right over them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, because they didn't have my idea, which was to uh, just kind of, you know, walk forward. <laughs> well, or crawl forward at certain, a certain point, sure. then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, and I, I mean it, it, it's it's just the the nature of how they're shooting this show it's not like indiana jones and the temple of doom they're shooting from every angle and they have a right. budget and <laughs> <laughs> they don't just need an open space so that we could see indy being crushed but in this case it, it, it worked though it worked fine mm -hmm. yep yep now this leads up to an interesting end of part one because they catch up with the two. And once again, we've got, you know, 
our two kind of splitting up as Dinah Girl goes running after Cleopatra. Electra Woman immediately captures the Pharaoh with her force shield, but he's got the Coptic eye. So he's able to get out of the force shield with it and then uses it to force Electra Woman to capture Dinah Girl. And Frank sees this, so he cuts off the power to Electra Woman, and that's enough time for, and, and we get a return of a weapon that we saw in the last episode, the mummifying gas, as he traps the two of them. So yeah, I, I that, did appreciate uh, the mummifying gas being back. I like the continuity of, of that same uh, that same weapon being used again. Yeah, mm -hmm. I enjoyed how when, when the Pharaoh's trapped in the uh, Electra Force, he could just reach his arm out, out of it, to, to, to use the Coptic eye. Like it, it yeah. doesn't trap you in place. You can, <laughs> you can just kind of maneuver your arm straight up and out of it to hypnotize Electra woman. And I also enjoyed how Dinah girl and Cleopatra had just been in a chase this whole time. And then they, they eventually <laughs> make their way back and they arrive, yes. the two of them together, just completely out of breath. <laughs> Sorry, we've been in a chase, but now we're back. And now we're back. Yeah, and they managed to run it at just the right moment too, which is good. <laughs> But it does set them up because now they're trapped by the mummifying gas. So Cleopatra opens this basket and a bunch of asps approach them as we come to the end of part one. How will the mummified Electro Woman and Dinah Girl ever see their way out of this mess? Tune in for next week's slithering conclusion. No street is safe for the bionic woman in the conclusion of Jamie Shield. Then... To the fat. Charlie! Beretta jumps a fat cat that fights back. And Charlie's angels roll into a death derby. Right after the bionic woman and Beretta. Tomorrow, starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on ABC. I'm Ron Howard. And I'm Donnie Moe. We're wishing you holiday greetings from all of us on, on Happy, Happy Days. Days. The Wonder Woman leads off the action and meets the Falcon, whose secret weapon is earthquakes. Then Starskin Hutch collar a tough and troubled 12-year-old bandit. And the most wanted is a beautiful face hiding the heart of a murderess. Right after Wonder Woman and Starskin Hutch. Saturday on ABC. Come on, everybody. Let's undo it. New Year's resolution? I'm going to undo everything I did last oh, year. Undo the punch, undo the drink. Undo everything. Seven up the perfect mixer elixir. Undo it with ham, with turkey, with shrimp, with hors d'oeuvres. Why did the end call across the room? To get to the punchline. <laughs> Here's the season to undo it. Pull along. You wake the colas. KMBC TV9, Kansas City, Missouri. Let's gravitate over there. And Electro Woman and Dinah Girl face the Pharaoh. 18 tons of stone have sealed off the entrance to this chamber. And blocked our power from Electra Base. Is there any way out? None. The system is foolproof. America loves Christmas with a million twinkling lights. America loves the sound of bells across the starry night. America loves a lot about Christmas. Especially giving. So Burger King has gift certificates. 50 cents each or books of 10 for $5. Great to give, great to receive. We wish you a Merry Christmas from America's Burger King. FTFM! Stay tuned for more! Tons of stone have sealed off the entrance to this chamber. Electra Woman and Dinah Girl find themselves trapped. But with the evil pharaoh. Don't go away. Look, Electra Woman. The chamber is airtight. And we're losing our oxygen supply. Oh, I never thought of that. Who gets what's left? We're all of us doomed. Now, how do you feel about ass? Yeah, this was... I know you're not fond of spiders. I, I'm not a fan of spiders. I'm fine with snakes. The only thing I have a, a real weird, you know, pointless problem with is, is the spiders. So I'm cool with snakes. They're fine. I, I did notice, though, that uh, just like in the uh, the Spider Lady episode where they used actual spiders, these were real snakes that we saw in this right. episode. Yeah. But once again, you never actually see moving snakes and 
the actors, the faces of the actors in the same shot. It's all carefully edited so that I think it was someone else handling. It would just be a close-up of a hand and, and close-ups of their, 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 the boots and knees as they're showing the snakes moving in the basket and on the floor. So once again, I, I think they kept the actual actors away from the snakes. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The Coptic Eye. In the hands of the wrong people spells certain disaster. And no one could be more wrong than the infamous Pharaoh and his conspiring cohort, Cleopatra. The Coptic Eye. Oh, if I could only get my hands on it. With its extraordinary powers, I could rule the world. As the villains wove their evil plot, our superheroines were introduced to Heflin's latest electrocomp attachment, Electrovision. Ah. <laughs> Electrovision can turn night into day, as you can see, huh? Having lured Electro Woman and Dinah Girl to King Tut's pyramid, the Pharaoh sprang his first of many traps. The Coptic Eye. But the evil pair are caught. You'll never learn, will you, Pharaoh? A premature statement. Hypnotic, isn't it? Impossible to resist. Show her, Electro Woman, with your force shield. Now! Electro Woman, stop! Let me go! To ensure his escape, the Pharaoh used his mummifying spray on Dinah Girl and Electro Woman, while Cleopatra made their getaway complete. Shall we take the cup and die and go conquer the world? It is here, in this venomous predicament, that we find our superheroines. Mummifying spray, now, what makes it effective? <laughs> Molecular structure? Yes. Yes, of course. Yes, you can shatter it with vibrations. <laughs> oh, my earplugs, my earplugs. <laughs> ah. Once again, Frank helps them out by having sound waves emit from their electric comps which shakes the gas off them, basically, if, if, I, if I understood <laughs> that right. Yeah, something about shattering with vibrations. Yes. <laughs> which, which even affected back at the base, because Frank also said, oh, earplugs, earplugs. And Frank puts in <laughs> earplugs back at the base because yep. of the vibrations that he was creating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they degravitate up that when, when they, they they're able to so that the, the snakes are at their feet so they electro degravitate and rise up and then they're like let's go over there and then <laughs> they move about six feet to the left and sink right back down <laughs> in in, in uh, some ropey green screen effects as they just basically are lifted up standing in place and moved over <laughs> sure but again, like the, the is the idea to escape the snakes because the snakes are right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the snakes seem to be uh, for for as terrified as everybody is of the snakes, and even including Cleopatra eventually, even though they're her snakes. The snakes seem to be uh, pretty chill. They're just <laughs> they're, they're just sitting on the floor, not doing much of anything through the whole show. Yes. <laughs> Uh, you know, while they're doing their their little, you know, getting away from the snakes and stuff, the Pharaoh and Cleo are moving through the pyramid trying to get out. And, and the Pharaoh says he's got one more plan in case they manage to escape the asps. He's got this 18 ton slab that's going to steal <laughs> them off when the sands run out in a time uh, piece that got there. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, and again, this is another one of those things like in part one where like there's Judy running after Cleopatra and they kind of run into, uh, you know, run around and come back again. Well, now the two villains manage to walk right into our two heroes. We're losing valuable time, Dinah girl. There's no telling where the Pharaoh could be by now. Here we are. Forget something? 
I don't think your Coptic eye will get you out of this one, Pharaoh. Right. You're uh, running out of time. Time? The hourglass, the stone, 18 tons! What's he babbling about? Oh, probably some trick. There's no time to explain. We've got to get... Out of here. Our electrophore shields have gone dead. Now what's going on? Electrowoman Danigo, come in! 18 tons of stone have sealed off the entrance to this chamber. And blocked our power from electrophase. Is there any way out? None. The system is foolproof. Come on, class, but there must be some signal from them. Electrowoman Dyna Girl! Completely lost contact. Look, Electrowoman! The chamber is airtight! And we're losing our oxygen supply. Oh, I never thought of that. Who gets what's left? We're all of us doomed. The asps in the dark, they'll attack. We've got to get out of here. Air, air. I can't breathe. Yeah, it was kind of through the whole episode. There was a lot of confusion and bumbling and circling around and reading the maps and which way do we go? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> the Pharaoh and Cleopatra seemed quite befuddled through the whole episode. Uh, when the, the block, the giant stone block, again, we with the, the first one that we saw was an actual effect. There was a giant thing, you know, over, over Electra Woman and Diana Girl, the sinking mm -hmm. ceiling, essentially. In this case, when they show the block dropping to seal off the entrance, it's so clearly a miniature. <laughs> it's just, just the way the thing moves. You can tell, oh, that thing is six inches tall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't they didn't do a great job of like trying to make it look more like in scale and stuff. It's like, yeah, okay, this <laughs> is a <the> miniature. <laughs> Yeah, just the way it moved, you could tell that's not a giant thing. That's a little tiny thing that somebody is just pushing down. <laughs> but what's interesting is that they're like there and, you know, especially the Pharaoh, he's freaking out about the lack of air that the air is running out and the lights start to flicker and such. And remember the asps? Well, there's still a threat now, apparently, because once the lights go out, it'll be easier for the asps to attack. Yeah, Cleopatra immediately is terrified of the snakes because yeah. yeah, they're in the in the dark. The snakes will attack us, <laughs> and she is freaked out. Yep. But then eventually, though, with the snakes, they just cut to like the end of Electra Woman and Dino Girl just calmly gather the snakes and put them back in the basket. Yes. Just, they cut to a scene of well, here's the last one, <laughs> and yeah. you see the <laughs> the snakes have been returned to the basket and then as soon as cleopatra comes back in the room she just picks up the basket like okay thanks for uh thanks, gathering thanks. my snakes for me right exactly <laughs> yeah it, 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 there's some weird like moments that, that you kind of left scratch your head going okay like that like she just picks up the basket after all the freaking out and everything like that but <laughs> <laughs> um there's hieroglyphics that they are able to interpret that tells them if they can open a small window of light it will raise the slab just enough, you know, for them to get out. And sure enough, they do. But the Pharaoh then uses the Coptic eye to hypnotize them. So the two of them can escape. Uh, right. I, yeah. You know, I and like this, the, the instant, the, all the, the turns of, well, we have to work together, but then they're yes. going <laughs> to, they're also immediately ready to, to turn on the ladies and make their escape. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, this is now where, once again, you know, we've got to use the, the the night vision. And, of course, you know, like you said, blinding light. So, basically, it triggers the opening mechanism so that they're able to escape. But not before it sets off also a self-destruct that isn't happening, according to Frank. Did we ever get any? I, I don't know, like, if I just lost it somewhere there. Like, was there clarification yeah. of what this was all about? <laughs> Was it part of the part of the hypnosis that that they were hypnotized into thinking that there was an earthquake? Maybe, 
Maybe, Perhaps. maybe that was something that he did to them so that on any uh, as, but like, it's never explained because there's Frank going, nothing's happening, you know? And it's like, okay. Yeah. Um, which I, I like the way you could, you, you could see like Frank's watching on his monitor and there they are just looking around like terrified, but there's nothing happening. But then mm -hmm. in the shot from, from Elector woman and Dino girl's point of view, you see, oh yeah, it's an earthquake and very effective as well. I think the combination of shaking the camera, the sound effects and the giant chunks of, of stone, and 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 whatnot f crashing and crashing around them was a, a very effective uh, earthquake from their perspective. I thought. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, as far as I could tell, it was. I, I think. I guess it was just part of being hypnotized that they thought there was an earthquake. If that, if if the if the fake earthquake was also an ancient Egyptian trap, <laughs> that's <laughs> even more impressive that they were able to restore that <laughs> after moving the whole thing to America. Right. <laughs> Excellent work. Excellent work. American craftsmanship. What can I tell you? <laughs> uh, but they do escape. They do get out of the pyramid and they head for the Pharaoh's lair where they catch up with the two. Now, I got one question, though. The Pharaoh has his Coptic eye and he tries to use it on the two of them again. How did the Electrovision manage to sort of divert the ray? Yeah, it seemed like just before he was able to actually start using the Coptic eye, they just blinded him with the Electrovision first. And then the scene just cut short at that point. So we're just left to assume, okay, they were blinded and then they just captured them at that point while they were blinded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there was just, I, I it, 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 you know, it's funny. Unlike, say, when we did the return of, uh, what was what was the other one? The um, What was his name? The, the Sorcerer. The sorcerer. The sorcerer. I about, yeah. I was about to say the magician. When when we did the return of the sorcerer, there seemed to be a lot more like meat to the story. You know, this one just seems to be almost like we're using the tropes of the pharaoh in Egypt and all that, but there really didn't seem to be a lot of connectivity with the story. It seemed like they just they, yeah. were, they were just weird cut moments, almost like, hey, we're done. Let's just finish this up. <laughs> <laughs> a little sadly like that was the case yeah the, especially in the ending i think that the, the capture the the resolution seemed rushed yeah <laughs> you know it's all about the the, the ride it, it was just silly fun watching them run around a, a sure. pyramid for, for 20 minutes sure. <laughs> and then they just had to wrap it up somehow very quickly mm-hmm and of course, we get our, our end scene with Frank in the Electra base. Well, you girls stop the Pharaoh once again. <laughs> Won't he ever learn? Well, thanks to your Electra vision, I think he finally saw the light. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, Judy does a little uh, corny joke and then <laughs> Frank immediately announces he doesn't get it. Yeah. I like that the whole series ends on Frank just being completely befuddled. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh, and anything else about this that that we didn't touch on i know we kind of went through quickly but it, there really wasn't a whole lot of substance sadly to this one yeah and i mean we covered the actors uh who played cleopatra and the pharaoh in our previous uh coverage of episode six so the only other new actor that we had in this one was the guy that moved the pyramid <laughs> to America uh, that uh, Laurie and Judy were interviewing, uh, Mr. McClintock. So that actor was uh, named Sterling Swanson. And I didn't, uh, I didn't find too much notable information about this actor. He was an actor who was around back then. So, you know, a, a bunch of credits on various shows, uh, you know, one-off appearances here and there. He did a Kojak. He did a Rockford Files. He was on BJ and the Bear, <laughs> okay. you know, Greg Evigan in a truck with a monkey. Yes. <laughs> How do you beat that? <laughs> oh, yeah. and I like this. Uh, the angels. <laughs> yes. Remember his, the uh, season, his angels? Weren't they the angels? Weren't they called that or something like that? The seven women. Oh, I, I don't. Oh, I don't think I made it to uh, season two of BJ oh, and the Bear. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> had angels. We, oh, had wow. the, we had the Lander sisters as two of the seven. Wow, I've got to go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's our next podcast. <laughs> there you go. 
PJ. Oh no! What a what we might get Greg Evigan on to interview him. I would love to talk to Greg Evigan. I have so many questions about my two dads. <laughs> Uh, this guy, Sterling Swanson, uh, his final credit, though, we must point out, was the late 80s E.T. ripoff movie, Mac and Me. Oh, I have seen that movie. That is painful. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. Yeah. So uh, that, that is uh, Sterling Swanson. Yeah, I mean, overall, this was it was another Electro Woman episode, but not, not one of the standout episodes of the no. series, I no. would say, but uh, gets the job done just fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, let me ask you this then if you were to sum this up in an electro <laughs> superlative how would you go about doing that yeah let's yeah. you know I, I i just can't i just can't get over moving <laughs> moving a pyramid <laughs> from uh africa to north america so i'm just gonna say this was electro ridiculous <laughs> okay <laughs> I like that. Yeah. But I loved it. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I I can't go on the love category. To me, after everything, <laughs> every episode we've done, we there's been so many high points, no matter how goofy and zany. This still was goofy and zany, but I just always felt that there was something cohesive holding everything to, together. So I'm going to say Electra uncohesive. <laughs> Ooh. <Yeah. laughs> That's this, tricky. This, this was, I like this it. Was, you know, I mean, as a kid, I probably didn't pay any attention because the very next week, you know, January 1st, they probably went all the way back to the beginning and started over again. But but with 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 the sorcerer, you know, the first sorcerer story. But it just looking at it now, 40 years later, you're or nearly 50 years (laughs) later, you know, 45 or so. um, It's it it was a bit disappointing to, to wrap this show up to be honest with you. Oh yeah, and I mean the story for what the story is it's just fine. That this what this is candy. This is a you know silly children's entertainment as part of a a goofy anthology series from the mid 70s. When they were making this 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 plot this story just fine. <laughs> I can't imagine that anybody would have any hesitation about approving and greenlighting this script just the way we saw it. They could not have imagined that 45 years later, two very sad men would be pouring over every frame of it and <laughs> critically analyzing it on a podcast. So we, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't hold them to that kind of standard. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that we're true. scrutinizing it to this extent a half a century later. That's true. They could not have conceived of such a thing. But (laughs) here we are. Here we are. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and it's not entirely over yet. We got one more thing to talk about with Electro Woman. But before we get into that, to wrap up the show here, um, Kevin, you know, what's going on over at the Flopcast? We are rolling along on the Flopcast. Yeah, we've been celebrating our 10th anniversary all year, 10 years of podcasting every single week. And uh, we're just being silly every single week. It's mm-hmm. my co-host Cornflake and I, and we uh, we just obsess over silly, obscure pop culture of the 70s and 80s quite a bit, this kind of thing, as well as we'll drift in all sorts of ridiculous directions every week you never know what we're going to do uh we're just having just having fun uh join us there please we are at flopcast.net yes yes you can find all the episodes there or of course on any of your popular as i jokingly said uh in a recent episode with uh joe stuber or unpopular podcast apps because somehow or another <laughs> they, they just seem to be popping up everywhere on even the smallest podcasting platforms i'm finding it these days back cave on and i'm like how'd that get there <laughs> yeah i think a lot of those uh those little podcast apps they just pull from apple so if you're on apple you just automatically get drawn into all those other uh podcast sources so yeah you, you'll you'll find us everywhere you go you'll find the bat cave podcast everywhere you'll find the Flopcast everywhere. We're, we're going to get John on the Flopcast one of these days. We, I've been yes. threatening to, uh, to to get John as a special guest on the Flopcast, and we, we, we've got to make that happen soon because that's mm-hmm. going to be fun. We've got a few ideas, too, we've been talking about, like things we could talk yeah. about. So, yeah. yeah, perhaps something Saturday morning themed, just yes. like these Electro Woman shows. 
Yes. Yeah. That yeah. That's happening. That's yeah. happening. Hopefully sometime soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, folks, like I said, it's not entirely over yet. Yes, this was the last episode. <laughs> but, but, but. <laughs> There's two, a very weird epilogue coming yes. up. <laughs> in 2001, uh, Sid and Marty <laughs> Croft did try to revive Electro and Dina Girl with a pilot episode starring none other than Marky Post as Electro Woman. Um, and she fit the costume quite well, I must say. <laughs> I have concluded uh, Electra Woman's adventures in the 20th century. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> there is more to the story. There is <laughs> so more yes, to the story. A bonus episode is in the works. Yes, and, and we shall be back quite soon with that look at that pilot, which is quite different than our beloved 1970s show. <laughs> and, yet, and yet, I got to say, I find the charm in it. I did. I did anyway. Just cards on the table. I found the charm in it, but we'll talk about it. I'm not going to say how I feel about this. We'll leave that as a tease for next time. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening here. Kevin, thank you for being here. This has been quite a run, John. My pleasure. It's been a, it's been great going through this uh, classic old series, which, man, I loved back in the day and uh, really fun to uh, just do a deep dive on these shows. Yes. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. So, folks, until next time, thank you so much for listening. Once again, Kevin, everyone, take care. <laughs> Next week for more fun on the Croft Super Show. Don't get left behind. Take a trip with us today. We will lead you to a land of dreams. Croft has some super shows. They will blow your mind away. When you join us, you'll know why we say. Super Show.